first, I'd like to start uh, with a little background without going into too much detail at this moment. Uh, quite frankly, if it were not for the Ramapo Muncie people, by the way, I'd like to say Ramapo stands for Sweetwater and Muncie is the people of the mountains. It's not some kind of weird sloping rock and whatever they put out. Our ancestors essentially were, were people who settled disputes among other tribal peoples and farmers. When I say people of the mountains, we're talking about the Adirondacks and all the mountains that I'm you're aware of here in the uh, Northeast. We were talking at one point there were perhaps north of 70,000 Muncie people in the area today. There's barely 5,000, certainly not, not certainly more than that, uh, Ramapos locally. So what I wanted to share initially is that survival in the New York metropolitan area is distinctly different than anywhere else in the country. I would like to, but before I dwell into that, just let me get through the initial part. If it were not for the Ramapos, it would not be a New York, a New Jersey, or United States of America. That's a pretty big statement. Fact is, the Ramapos controlled the Ramapo Pass and that section of the Hudson River. We're talking about a good 12-mile section or more of Hudson River coming up from Manhattan. Without us allowing the British uh, to station, which they did, 5,000 troops in the Ramapo Pass and also along the Hudson, it would have been literally impossible to win the revolution for the British as the British could only resupply their troops off the Atlantic Ocean or march them down through Canada. By us working with George Washington, eliminated any strategic surprise and or advantage. I might want to add our portals, our Tahita Way, the gate that opens, we call it Split Rock, many of us, is also tied to the, one of the seven planets of the Pleiades. And yes, it does represent those who've come before and those who are yet to come, the sacred people that would return. Back in when our ancestors actually lived upon the land in freedom, we used to settle disputes between tribal, intertribal members. They would go up to the Tahita Way. Below it, below the field, there was a field. There was two long houses there. The one long house existed into the early 50s. They would go up to the Tahita Way, come to a solution, come back down to the people, share the solution, and go forward. The proof that Mr. Washington also went up there because he said he shared like like values, equality, freedom, and dignity for all man. Mr. Washington went up to the Tahita Way, and, that, and as it later became known as, so you know it was George Washington, not a, not a native, they called it Constitutional Hill. Constitutional Hill. Now, the interesting part is because everyone knows that George Washington never tells a lie. The first thing that Mr. Washington did after becoming successful in the American Revolution was to move to enslave the Ramapo people. The very first people to be enslaved by the by the whatever they were after the American Revolution were the Ramapos. Harriet Tubman actually called Bergen County the most dangerous slave county in the country. Keep in mind, Harriet Tubman was walking, going down south to free people. That brings us to today. We have suffered under every type of social, economic, and uh, academic uh, oppression that you can find lately up until actually, I would say this year, our children were encouraged to drop out of high school at seventh or eighth grade. Our redoubt, which was the Ramapo, which was the redoubt, that's why it was the Ramapo Pass, uh, is where the last of us uh, lived, the Ramapo Muncie. We lived on Stag Hill. Stag Hills also was called uh, the people lived there. We were talking about the Tahita Way. Uh, the, I can't think of the names right now, but there's a corresponding <laughs> Silver Lake in in Ontario and Canada, the Ungava. So the the men of the Ungava actually fought to preserve our our freedom. What happened here recently with Stag Hill, where I'd say 90% of the Ramapo live. They, uh, let me also say this, all of the people that they helped drop out of school seventh or eighth grade, 
They gave them really good paying jobs with security for the, for the town of Marlboro. That's really, really great, except if the only place you can get a job paying like that is the town, you're effectively an indentured servant. Fast forward about 20 years, they changed the zoning. All of the tribal people owned a number of acres so that they would, like anywhere else, we could give it to our children and increase our population and the, and the love for our families. What happened was they changed the zoning saying you must pay, you must uh, have five acres to build a house. Five acres. We're in New York metropolitan area. That's a true, that's a, you could damn near buy a, a reservation out west with five or six uh, property taxes here. So that was too much of an economic burden after we released and got back to owning one acre per person and sold off the rest. They changed the zoning back to one acre per person. And right now, those very same hills that we own is being, we're being, we are being run out by people in McMansions. Last time I was up there, I was with a friend of, a, 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 of Mr. Trump. And looking around, he wanted to go places. I didn't take him. I thought it was interesting. I took him down uh, Geiger Road and uh, jumped out the car. And he's going, whoa, what a wonderful power spot like this. I could have hit him with a rock. The other important thing about, guy, about living on Stag Hill is, and I think people need to know this, uh, Otto Mann was one of our first uh, chiefs in modern times. And him and the women and the children built the road off the mountain going down into Morwall so that the school buses could travel safely. It took Morwall seven years after the completion of that road that they built by hand to pave it. Up until then, the only way to come down the hill was Geiger Road, and a number of people had died coming down there in cars. It was so steep at the end of it that if you went fast enough, you could literally hit the front of your bumper of your car. I'm saying all that to say is not only has our land been stolen in modern times to, to uh, what I would only have to consider would be Jim Crow with a tuxedo on. We've been humiliated and set upon racially for every possible thing you can imagine. And here we are today. We are literally at the end of quiet genocide and we're still suffering from the same social greed and racism that we've seen running well over 400 years ago. So the message to me is that what we need to do, and I'm working with other people called Braver Angels and some other international groups, we're looking and looking to change the paradigm of how we look at wealth. We want everybody to have all the wealth that they can use, but we'd like people to understand that the real quality of life and the real wealth in life is kindness and that we are truly relatives and brothers of the mountains, the waters, and the air, and all of the children thereof. And it was therefore kindness, kindness to our relatives and to each other that is going to allow us to go forward and to aspire. But I surely believe that without kindness, there will be no grandma, there will be no earth, there will be no to eat away. Thank you. Mm -hmm.